Hey guys, I'm going to do my retrospect on Sonic Adventure. Sonic Adventure is a game developed by Sonic Team and was released back in 1998. It was developed because characters like Mario and Zelda were making their jumps in 3D, and the eyes were on Sonic to do the same thing. Yeah, and as an example, we got games like Sonic Blast, Sonic 3D Blast, and Sonic R. Games that were subpar by best. But in 1998, it finally happened. Sonic made his proper jump to 3D. You'd have everything, your high speed, your platforming, everything except Elemental Shield, but we'll get to that in a minute. The game was released back in 1998 for Japan, and 1999 for everyone else. It was also ported to the GameCube back in 2003, and finally received another port on the Xbox 360 and PS3 back in 2010. The experience I had the most with. Anyway guys, I don't really have that many memories of Sonic Adventure 1. In fact, the first game Sonic game ever played it was Sonic Heroes. In fact, I didn't play Sonic Adventure 1 until it came out on the PSN store. I don't know if it's on Steam. I have a reason to check it out again. Who knows? Maybe we'll look at some mods later. Oh yeah, that's pretty much our experience with the game, guys. It's been nearly 20 years since this game came out, and everyone will love this game. So here's a question. Is this game any good? Is it something we can recommend to you? Let's find out. And just a quick heads up, the footage that you're seeing is from the let's play I did of the game a few weeks ago. So if you want to watch that, I'll have the link of the playlist in the description below, but this is a disclaimer. The uh, episodes range from 20 to 50 minutes long, so um, you might, you might want to grab some popcorn. Sonic Adventure is a 3D platform game released back in 1998 in Japan and 1999 for everyone else. It was the series first dump to 3D, and no, 3D bots didn't count because, well, f*** that game. You have new characters and old characters rocking their own playstyles. First spoiler warning, if you don't want the story spoiled for you or you already know what's gonna happen, please skip to this part of the video right now. I'll give you 5 seconds. Knuckles is guarding the Master Emerald on Angel Island, until Chaos and Tax and showers the Master Emerald. Now Angel Island falls to the ocean. In the city of Spatian Square, Sonic is spider manning his way down the city, until he notices the cops. Sonic fights and defeat Chaos and he just goes down the drain. Elsewhere, Tails is finds a tornado until he realizes that something is wrong. Sonic finds Tails washed up on shore. He tells Sonic that he's using the Chaos Emeralds as his power supply for the tornado. The dual butt has a little botnik who Sonic insultingly calls Eggman. I'm just gonna say this right now guys, I like the name Eggman more. Call me weird. Eggman tells Sonic that he's after the Chaos Emeralds too. He wants to use them to power up Chaos to turn into the perfect Chaos so he can destroy Station Square so he can build Eggman land on top of it. After the first few stages, Sonic and Tails are collecting Chaos Emeralds, although they have a really difficult time holding on to them. They probably lose it in means of stupidity or knockout gas. Knuckles sees that Eggman has a piece of the Master Emerald. Knuckles finds out that Eggman is trying to power up Chaos to destroy Fish Square. After giving him a boop in the head, Eggman tells Knuckles that Sonic might be looking for the Master Emerald too, causing him to butt heads with Sonic. And instead of reasoning with them, he proceeds to beat the ever living crap out of him. Eggman starts with the egg carrier, and then Sonic and Tails follow suit with a tornado. The tornado gets shot, causing Sonic to fall into Station Square again, and Tails falling into the Mystic Ruins. Amy, making her first playable debut, finds a flicky bird and finds that there's a Chaos Emerald inside her pendant. After Sonic was on that offer to protect the bird, Zero catches Amy and Sonic provides the egg carrier to go catch him. Tails finds the Chaos Emerald to power up to this plane, yet a frog swoops in and takes it. There's also a big purple cat who wants his frog back, so yeah, that's a thing. Sonic and Tails arrive at the egg carrier again to save Amy. Eggman gets the Chaos Emerald that was in the bird's pendant. The ship loses altitude for some reason. So Sonic goes to find Eggman and Tails flies Amy back to Station Square safely. Sonic and Knuckles beat Chaos. Sonic goes after Eggman while Knuckles gains the last Jesus two shards Christ. of the Master Emerald, causing Edgelog to go fly in the sky once more. In Station Square, Eggman prepares to destroy the city with a missile, but looks out when he found out it's a dud. Sonic lands flat on its face, which is clearly a height above 300 feet, to wake up at a temple. Before he can make anything about it, Sonic spots Eggman by the temple. Meanwhile, on plot number 4, Amy finds the bird's missing parent, which was located in Gamma, which for some reason didn't die in that huge ass explosion. Eggman resorts to using the Eggwalker to destroy Station City, but again is defeated by Tails. Of course, Sonic confronts Eggman himself in the Egg Viper, then destroys it. Tails finally restores the shards of the Master Emerald, but Angel Island is still falling to the ocean. Chaos him and Knuckles and gets all the Chaos Emeralds that was with him. 
Before Sonic and Tails get the last Chaos Emerald, Chaos swoops in and takes it, allowing him to turn the perfect Chaos in the story station square. But no worries, nobody dies. We found out that the Nibi-like creature is a girl named Tikal. Throughout actually character's story campaign, Tikal will interrupt the player's progress to show you some backstory on her or, or Chaos himself. Tikal's father Pac-Man wanted all the Chaos Emeralds for peace. At the risk of destroying people and countries, WHAT AN ASSHOLE! Tikal managed to heal herself in Chaos inside the Master Emerald to stop his rampage, but was released when Dr. Eggman shattered the Chaos Emerald. Apparently, Chaos only used the negative power of the Chaos Thermals, so Song has to use the positive energy of the Chaos Thermals to be perfect Chaos, turning into Super Sonic. The game ends with Song chasing after Eggman. At first, guys, I thought the story was okay. Not great, but not amazing either. Now, I can say it's... eh. It's okay. Yeah, the story leaves a lot to be desired, but in terms of each character's individual story, it's okay. Sonic can be stunned up as trying to stop Eggman, Tails can be stunned up as being less dependent of Sonic, Knuckles just wants to restore the Master Emerald, and, a and Amy learns to stick up for herself. Yeah, my only other problem with the story is how insignificant the other characters can be. You probably noticed that I failed to mention about Gamma and Basic Cat's story, or well, they're unimportant to the plot. It's about him betraying Eggman. He seemingly dies at the end, releasing the bird inside him. That's good for the bird, but what does that have to do with Chaos? And for Big. Nothing happens in the story, it's just about him getting his frog back. And another problem I have with the story, why does the call his mother showing Big and Gamma to any of this? It's not like they matter to the story. Now with the story out of the way, let's cover the gameplay. You assume the control as Sonic kills Knuckles, in Gamma, and Big. Sonic's gameplay is kinda like his Genesis counterpart, but in 3D. He can do anything that he can do from the Genesis games. He can jump, spin dash, and jump on enemies, and even has a few new moves. The first one is the homing attack. It lets you destroy enemies while keeping the speed going. Jumping on enemies still work, but personally I prefer using a homing attack. And then there's the light speed dash which allows Sonic to travel through a trail of rings very fastly. All in all guys, you're gonna have a lot of fun with Sonic. He travels through 10 of the 11 stages and it's a lot of fun. Now let's go on to Tilt's gameplay. Tilt controls exactly like he did in the Genesis days, except the only thing he can't do is spin dash, which kinda sucks, but you know what? I'll let it slide. Instead, he gets a tailspin, which he'll get an upgrade for later in the game, called the Ribbon Badge, which lets him do his continuous tailspins. And once he reaches top speed, he just does his roll attack. Tails' levels are similar to Sonic's, but instead of going one pathway, he raised Sonic to the finish. Tails travels through 5 of the 11 stages, and his levels are a lot of fun. Just like Sonic's levels, there are different shortcuts you can take to pass either Sonic or Eggman. All in all guys, I had a lot of fun with Tails, I just wish that his levels weren't so short. Knuckles' gameplay here is actually pretty good. It's constructed in more of a sandbox fashion than the platforming, so it, so it encourages more exploration than platforming. You need to collect shards in the Master Emerald. To collect them, you need to pay attention to your radar right there. If the radar goes red, that means you're close to, a, to the Emerald Shard. Knuckles also uses hand-to-hand -hand combat, which, to me, I don't really find as graceful as jumping on enemies or using a glide. While I'm sad that Knuckles doesn't really get into the action as much as Sonic or Tails, thankfully, he's just as acrobatic, if not even more, than he was in the Genesis days. All in all, guys, Knuckles is brought to the 3D world almost perfectly, although it's kind of sad to say that the idea was really improved upon in Adventure 2, but we'll get into that later. Amy's playstyle leaves a lot to be desired. Speed? Well, guess what? Unless you're running upstairs, you ain't getting none of that. Her levels are basically like a horror movie. Amy's stages are also traditional. You have to find the balloon in each stage to get away from zero. Her stages could be fun if she, if she was just a little bit more faster. In fact, the only way she can get, you can get to your destination faster if you use her hammer at top speed. She has two upgrades for it. One makes her spin around a bit, and the other makes her hammer longer. Her upgrades aren't really that helpful, but to be honest, I do get a small kick out of the minigame she gets to get her upgrades. You can beat Amy's story in about an hour tops. She doesn't really have that many stages. I mean, she has more cutscenes, if anything. All in all, guys, Amy's playstyle could have been good. Gamma's playstyle isn't really grand either. It's just shooting <laughs> Gamma's only one of the few characters that actually have a time limit in their stages, which is not really as bad as you think because you get a time bonus every time you kill an enemy. 
I mean, he's faster than Amy, but still not as fast as uh, Sonic or Tails. I mean, I'll give it to them. It does control a lot better here than it does in Sonic or 2, but, eh, game with playstyle could have been better. Now, it's time for, you guessed it, Big the Cat. So like I said, big story involves him searching for his frog. Big is a fisherman, that's all he knows. So you're gonna have to cast your lore in the water and pray to god that the frog takes it. And let's commence full on ramp mode. I hate Big's gameplay style. Fishing. Fishing? Why would I want to fish in a Sonic game? <sighs> you can manipulate your lore by swinging it around with the analog stick, but you can cast the attention of Froggy. Big's playstyle, even though laughably easy, is annoying. But for some reason, he was in, um, Team Sonic Racing. No, no, I don't want you. No, stop it. No, 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 no. Yes, come on. Get the bait. Get the bait. Come on. Froggy. Where'd he go? Yeah, considering the amount of effort that was put into Big's playstyle, I think it's safe to assume that he was never supposed to be a playable character in this game. And now it's time to tackle the main collectible of the game, Emblems. Emblems are awarded to you once you beat a stage, but in the DX port, there's some missions you can do. If you get all emblems in the Dreamcast port, you get absolutely nothing, but in a DX port, you get a Metal Sonic skin. Personally, I haven't done it because, well, fuck that. Personally, unless you want to have bragging rights, I don't think getting all the emblems isn't worth your time. Anyway, let's talk about the aesthetics. Personally, I think they're pretty good by Dreamcast standards. The characters look pretty good, they're detailed pretty nicely, and I even like the new details, like different eye colors. I mean, I like how Sonic looked in the Genesis days, but I also like how he looks now. But that's just graphics, as far as ingrained movements go, they're horrible. Everyone looks like they have something jammed up their asses, and the lip sync doesn't match the English dialogue. I wish I could blame the Dreamcast hardware, but look at games like the original Crash Bandicoot trilogy on the PS1. Not only does the lip syncing matches the English dialogue, but the characters move normally. Here's just the same repeated hand and lip motions. And some of the faces these characters make are just outright hilarious. And I'm looking at you, Sonic. <laughs> I'll give it this hard team though, the environments are a little bright and colorful, and it's easy to tell each stage apart from each other. So in short, the graphics look good, if a bit lacking. As far as the soundtrack goes, I mean come on, f***ing Sonic game, of course it's gonna be awesome. Personally guys, I think this and Adventure 2 has the best soundtrack series. I love every song in this game. Yes, even Big the Cat's theme song. I prefer something in this game would have to be Open Your Heart by Crush 40. It's such a good song. Although the voice acting could have been done a lot better. Not that I'm saying that is bad, but it, these voice actors kind of sound a little bit weird. And I don't know if it's just me, but Knuckles' voice actor kind of sounds a little bit bored at times. Ah, Eggman. What? I'm back in front of the altar. This is beginning to blow my mind. And the sound mixing isn't the stuff Queens either. I mean, I wouldn't say it's as bad as SA2s, but, but sometimes it's kind of hard to hear the characters. So in short, the overall audio presentation, eh, it's okay. So in conclusion, I had a lot of fun here, guys. This is an example of a 2D Genesis character brought into the 3D world almost perfectly. I say almost because A, no game is perfect, and B, there are, there are a lot of flaws with this game, but I can go easy on the game right there. Because this is the first time Sonic has ever been in 3D, so there's going to be a few flaws with that. Personally, I think this is better than Adventure 2. To be now, before you start typing those hate comments, let me explain. To be honest, guys, neither game really aged that well, in my opinion. But if I sat here and told you that I thought Sonic Adventure 2 was better than Adventure 1, I'd be lying to you. And since this game is almost 20 years old now, I wouldn't mind seeing a remake. I mean, Crash and Spyro got their own, so I think it's time for someone to get his. As far as controls go, I gotta be honest guys, I have no complaints. Not even, for, not even for Amy. All the characters feel like they have some sort of weight to them. And when I die, it feels like it was my fault. That's a pretty good feeling. If you go uphill, you'll go faster and faster. If you go downhill, you'll start to lose speed. That's how it should be. All in all guys, I had a lot of fun with Funk Adventure. And seeing how this game hasn't really aged well in some parts, 
I can still look past his flaws and see Sonic Adventure as a solid 3D platforming game. So in conclusion, I recommend you pick this game up and see what it's all about. So with that being said, I wanna know what you would think about this game. Is Sonic Adventure a good game to you? What the memories you have with this game? Leave that and more in the comments below. Next time we're gonna be we're gonna be taking a look at indie gaming, so now so for next re for next review, we're gonna be looking at Undertale. So since Sans is being in Smash now, I thought this would be the perfect time. So yeah, anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.